Welcome to From the Mind of Christine McConnell. This is our Halloween October episode, and we're tackling something really traditional, which is pumpkin carving. The first year we moved in here, I did a fun kind of craft along live stream, and I experimented with a technique that I didn't really have enough time to pull off or do justice in that sort of setup. And I realized I was gonna have to make a fun episode out of it. So that is what we're tackling today. And with that said, let's begin. What I like to do to start out any project involving a jack-o'-lantern is to kind of experiment with a few different faces. And it takes me a while to sort of determine a face that seems exciting and fun. So don't be discouraged if like the first couple that you draw don't end up being the one that you use. Maybe you'll use them in a later pumpkin. It's also a really great way to determine what kind of works if you have any sort of experimental ideas because you can get a pretty good sense of like what the finished project's gonna look like just based off of a simple silhouette drawing. In case you're not a terribly computer savvy person, but you like practical effects, something that's great that you can sort of achieve really good symmetry with is draw one thing that you love, fold it in half. Using the flashlight on your phone, light up the back side of the paper and just with a pencil, gently outline exactly, you know, what that shape is. And then once you've achieved that, you can actually flip that open again and then keep your flashlight exactly where it is and then just sketch that out lightly and you will have a perfect mirror to the opposite side. The first face I drew was actually on a smaller scale than this, but I was able to set that up and look at it as kind of a reference. And from there, I was able to just basically expand the size. Now, if you have a computer handy, you only need to draw this once and then you can just, you know, expand it obviously in a computer program and print it out, which would have been simpler. Okay, so we have a face that we're really happy with and now it's time to cut it out and transfer it onto our pumpkin. The way I like to do this is to use a Sharpie and there's a couple reasons for that. It has a really soft tip so when you mark on the pumpkin, it doesn't dent it at all. And then once you're done and ready to remove it, take a cotton ball, dip it in a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just wipe it away and it removes everything without staining your pumpkin. I'm kind of a full-blown cat lady so I I took some inspiration from the furry little creatures around my house with this face. Because you're attempting to apply a 2D surface to a 3D one, you're going to have to kind of, it's going to take a little bit of like finessing basically to get everything to lay exactly where you want it to, but it's not incredibly difficult, especially with this particular pumpkin because it has a fairly flat-ish surface. Once I was happy with my outline, it was time to draw out where I was gonna cut out on top. And I personally am a big fan of a zigzag line. Now it's time to start carving out our pumpkin. And I have a couple little tips to share. The cheap pumpkin cutters are so amazingly good. I don't know why they are so good. And they're a little flimsy. You might have to replace them every year, but they are just dramatically better than trying to actually use a knife. When it comes to the pumpkin scoops, this one totally works great. This one works amazing. So it's a little tiny bit pricier, but I would splurge on this just because it makes it incredibly easy to clean out your pumpkin. And then lastly, you want these little detail cutters because 
as you're sort of refining your face and making sure everything looks really great, these are terrific for getting everything to be really precise. It's always easiest to cut out the top first and empty out your pumpkin. That way you're not really like fighting suction when you're trying to pull out pieces from the front and it just makes this whole thing go a little smoother. Make sure not to waste those seeds. Those are so delicious if you bake them. And if you guys like in a future episode, I can show a really great recipe on how these can be made. taking that alcohol that I mentioned and I'm just going to wipe away any of those traces of the Sharpie and as you can see it just works beautifully. Now it's time to start cutting out the face and I'm only using the precision tools on this just because the other ones can be a little loose and you can make a dramatic cut where maybe you don't want one. It's tempting to try to push in the pieces you've cut out, but you really want to pull them out the front. And what I like to do is use a sculpting tool to help sort of pop those out and it goes pretty smoothly. remember to have a bowl of candy nearby and some fun spooky Halloween music on while you do this because it just makes this whole entire project so much more enjoyable. Now the face is cut out and I'm just using the alcohol to get rid of any remaining Sharpie residue. This little fellow was made by Jerry Landers of Hopalong Hollow, and I have been waiting for a reason to show you guys just how cute he turned out. The next step we're going to try is the thing that I attempted in that live stream. I tried molding some clay around my pumpkin, and it's just really something you kind of need to spend a good amount of time perfecting and making it beautiful. I'm mixing orange, yellow, and taupe together to get as close as I can to matching the pumpkin. It doesn't have to be totally perfect, just kind of close. And I would definitely recommend using not the Sculpey brand, but like the cheap, like craft store brand, just because obviously this is kind of a throwaway project and you don't want to like spend too much on it. Mixing polymer clays into a really specific color is, <laughs> it requires a whole lot of elbow grease and they actually have like little machines that sort of take some of this grunt work out of your hands, but I don't have any of those. So I just, in the meantime, will just keep fiddling with it until I get the exact color I want. Rubbing alcohol kind of melts down polymer clay. And so if you're looking to fuse a piece onto something, or just kind of smooth out an edge, you definitely wanna have some rubbing alcohol on hand and a little bit of a brush to kind of work things all together. Once you have a feature looking exactly how you want it to, you can take that rubbing alcohol and a brush just to kind of smooth out any roughness. Something I find so fun and liberating about this particular kind of a project is you aren't making anything that's going to last forever. You're just honestly enjoying the season and making something that you can sort of admire for a little bit of time. And you can really kind of go as detailed or as little as you want. I think I'm kind of going somewhere in the middle of that.
If you happen to not have a lot of sculpting tools on hand, you can actually use the opposite end of a paintbrush, which usually has a kind of a rounded edge. Or if you have one of these little roller ball pieces, it's great for just kind of getting an initial smoothing. And then you can actually take your finger dipped in the rubbing alcohol to finish up that job. This is going to be a feral pumpkin, so I'm making sure he has a couple notches taken out of his ears. To really anchor in these additions that I've applied here to the face, I'm going to take a sculpting tool and just follow the natural lines that I see going down the pumpkin. And this is just gonna make everything look really cohesive. I wanted a slightly more whimsical looking stem. So I'm just taking like a hunk here of kind of darkish brown polymer clay and I'm just gonna extend this out just a touch. To set all of these clay additions, I'm taking a heat gun and I'm applying it just to the clay that I've added. I experimented on the back of the pumpkin. It didn't seem to at all burn or affect the pumpkin. So this kind of just worked out perfectly. You wanna avoid spending too much time on one spot because you don't wanna burn anything. So just, you know, gently keep the gun moving around. So our pumpkin is looking really, really fun. And now it's time to fix something with that clay. You wanna get the brightest, most unflattering light on your pumpkin. So fluorescent LED daylight, something that's just gonna really reveal all of the flaws. And we're taking some airbrush transparent paint. It's important that it's transparent. We're mixing some red and yellow together and we're just delicately gonna brush this over the clay and what it's gonna do is just kind of marry that all together. Something that is really wonderful about these airbrush paints is they actually naturally have a satin kind of finish and so do pumpkins. So when you kind of combine these two things together, you can't really spot any lines of demarcation. Once I was very happy with that, I mixed some of these airbrush colors until I got a really, really dark brown, almost close to black. And then I just started kind of going into the cracks and the crevices, kind of giving this whole thing a little bit of a seedy, spooky kind of look. This is again, something that doesn't have to be too precise. And I think I was being a little, a little tiny bit more persnickety than I needed to be. And later on, I started realizing that being a little more careless and splotching things around actually yielded a better look. My initial plan was to actually use my airbrush to create these kind of shadowed effects. And then I started experimenting with this and realized that honestly, it worked kind of just as good. And it also made me realize not everybody's gonna have an airbrush sitting around the house. So it's sort of helpful to sometimes come up with some alternative methods to achieving some of these grungier looks.
If you're enjoying this episode and want to see many more, follow the link below to Patreon, where you'll find the restoration of an antique parasol that I found in my attic, a glamorous makeover I gave to a plastic medical skeleton, and even a recipe for the creepiest cookies you've ever seen. So now it's time to light up our pumpkin. And I'm gonna try something pretty experimental here, so I have no idea if this is gonna work, but I want to actually create a scented candle inside of our pumpkin. The first step to start out this process, I took some store-bought wicks and I just sort of plucked them into, and they have kind of like a circular kind of metal base and they just tuck right into the texture of a pumpkin. So it worked out really good and they did not budge. In a double boiler, I'm now going to melt down some soy-based wax. To scent the candle, I'm adding a little bit of pumpkin souffle by Candle Science into the mixture. I'm probably being a little heavy-handed as I don't think you want to use quite so much. From there, you can pour your wax directly into your pumpkin and give it several hours to cool before you set it ablaze. And we're all finished and it's completely fun. I, I realize this is kind of like a bonkers amount of effort to put into something that's just gonna like rot and get tossed away. But I personally absolutely love like the rituals of Halloween, carving pumpkins and so dressing one up just a little bit more than is usual is totally okay with me. As for the scented candle, I wouldn't say it like blew my mind, but it definitely made the house smell pumpkin-y, which was kind of fun. And there was no sort of dire side effects that I saw come from it, so it didn't leak or do anything bad. So if you're interested, definitely give that a try. So with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Take care of yourselves and have a very happy Halloween.